I've spent close to a hundred million dollars on Facebook ads over the past seven years. And I've worked with multi-million dollar a month budgets all the way down to building a fresh ad account from scratch. Here's an example of a self-cooling bedsheets brand that I helped scale from 20 million to over 50 million in annual revenue in less than 24 months. I also scaled this online real estate education company to three million dollars a month in profitable ad spend and helping tens of thousands of women become entrepreneurs in the world of real estate. By the end of this video, you're going to have the knowledge you need to structure your Facebook ad account depending on your budget. And you'll also be armed with the information you need for when you do scale your budget to a higher degree. Here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna segment the budget tiers into three different categories. Small budget, where we're spending $50 a day all the way up to $999 a day. And if you're spending less than $50 a day on Facebook ads, I'm sorry, this video really isn't for you. My strategies only apply to those that are spending at least $50 a day. Then there's medium budget, where we're spending anywhere from $1,000 a day all the way to $50,000 a day. It's a big range, but just wait until we get to high budget, where we're spending $50,000 a day plus. Okay, first up, let's talk about some constant variables that don't change at all, regardless of how much you're spending on a daily basis. Every creative batch or creative test should have between three and six unique variations. The reason we do this is because Facebook is excellent at split testing combinations and variables. If you're familiar with how conversion rate optimization works on a website or a landing page, you know you have typically between two and six test variants that you're sending a percentage of traffic to. And then eventually after you've collected the data that you've needed over an extended period of time, you choose the winner and and that becomes your new control. Well, Facebook ads work almost the same way. Instead of it being a website change, you have an ad set and you control the exact amount of traffic and ad spend towards whatever test that you're running. And the algorithm within that ad set will pick the best ad, regardless of how many combinations you have, two, three, four, five, six plus, doesn't matter. It will pick that best combination to show to the end user that has the highest estimated action rate. The only difference between split testing on Facebook versus a website is that when you're using Facebook, you rely on the algorithm to make the most educated decision. Let's just take a step back and think like, hey, what if we tested four hooks for an original ad concept, right? And the top performer had a 50% hook rate, whereas the bottom performer only had a 28% hook rate. What if we only tested that bottom performer instead of testing full combinations of hooks? We'd only get a 28% hook rate and we would never know the true potential of that ad. Now you can test other things besides hooks, but I typically recommend that for video creative. And if you're testing static images, you can do a multitude of different things like different headlines, different fonts, colors, text, product locations, all of that. Now, secondly, we want to make sure that we have a standardized attribution window, bid strategy, and naming convention for our entire ad account. Keeping these variables the same will allow us to analyze the data that we're paying for at a much higher efficiency and a higher degree, which compounds over time as we prioritize our future creative investments. Third, and arguably the most important, we need a consistent flow of net new ad creatives coming into our ad account to test each week. During my time working as a media buyer in corporate America, I've worked with several household names like Steve Harvey, Dr. Kellyanne, EA Sports, and the clients that had the best success honestly wasn't really down to which buttons we were pushing in the ad account at what time as much as it was. How much do the clients prioritize a creative production system? Are they continuously providing us and myself with new assets to upload to Facebook? Are they coming up with ideas? Are they doing some research? And are they listening to the feedback that I'm able to give them? Now, if you're at a low budget, you'll typically test between one to two new batches a week with multiple variations in each of those batches, going back to my first point. If you're at a medium budget, you'll typically test between three and six batches per week. And at a high budget, you're testing six plus batches a week, all the way up to, I've seen 50 net new batches per week in an ad account. They were spending three and a half million a month, but that's what it takes to play at the high level. Now, the first thing that we need to understand with the low budget tier is that most of the time we're actually buying data, not profitability for our business. Because if you think about it, if we already had a profitable ad, we'd be scaling to the moon, right? Now, because we don't have that creative that will allow us to scale our ad account and or because we're facing business constraints like inventory, like tech issues, etc., we need to 
structure our ad account in a way that is hyper conducive to creative testing. Because it's not just about your ads, it's about the entire interaction period that a user has with your business. That could include your ads, your social media, your website, and even calling your phone number. It really depends on your sales process. And ultimately, that's what you need to build and further in the low and small budget tiers. You need to not only be focusing on your ads, but you also need to be testing all of the other variables that we just mentioned to build the most profitable customer journey that you possibly can at that time with your given resources. Because it doesn't make any sense to scale a customer journey to two, three, four, five, six thousand dollars a day in profitable ad spend if that customer journey itself isn't maximized. Now, I understand that not everybody listening is going to be comfortable with the thought of spending money to not make any in return. And look, I get it. If you're strapped financially and you don't have the ability to invest in creative learnings in the way that I'm saying, that's cool. You can still make Facebook ads work for you. What I would recommend is putting yourself into two different categories. So over here, you have existing market penetration. Let's say you have been in business for several years and you're a name within your community, within your industry niche, people know you, but you haven't run Facebook ads before. Then use cost caps at a $50 a day budget and you should be able to capitalize on some existing intent there. And your ads should be relatively profitable as long as you know what you're doing with your creative, your landing page, etc. If your business has never been heard of before, maybe you're drop shipping, maybe you are just starting an e-commerce brand from scratch and you have something new to show to the market, you want to test it. Awesome. No problem. Don't use cost caps because those aren't going to work for you. Instead, I would recommend lowest cost. And then again, just follow the process and procedure that we just spoke about where we're continuously producing one to two new batches of creative per week, uploading those at $50 a day, letting them spend and building the data that way. Now, regardless of whatever category you just found yourself in, there is one thing you need to prioritize above everything else at this budget tier. And that is taking big swings with your ad creative. We don't want to be focused on building micro variations or trying to split test small things like headlines. Rather, we want to focus on taking big swings if we can in testing the highest leverage variable you have at your disposal for ad creative testing. And that is your creative style, also known as format. Here's a few examples. Here's a podcast style. Here's a high production style. And here's an X reasons why style. They all function a little bit different and you can see the actual differences in the ads. They're structured in a completely different way, even if they hit the same marketing angles or if they're all short form or mid form video content. And if you're testing static images, we can do the same thing. You can test a call out style, a before and after style, and a big claims style. Simply rinse and repeat these processes that I've just laid out for you. Congratulations, we're in the medium budget tier where things get really interesting. Now the main difference that separates a low budget account from a medium budget account with Facebook ads is that with a medium budget account that's spending over a thousand bucks a day profitably, you actually have some creatives that are doing a good job. And more importantly, we can rely and trust that if we put our money behind these creatives, we're going to expect X outcome with some volatility, of course. And so because we can rely upon the performance of some of these winning ad creatives at this scale, we can add a layer of complexity to our ad account that isn't just focused on creative testing. Now, not only are we able to add budget vertically to these ad sets that are doing well for our business, 20% each day, but we'll also be able to introduce scaling campaigns to our overall account setup. Whereas previously, we only had one campaign and it was just for creative testing. Now for your budget, I take the average order value of my product or service, and then I divide that by my desired customer acquisition cost. If you're running a call booking campaign, you could be using that as a cost per call booked. I then take that number and I multiply it by 100. After that, I round to the nearest fifth. And so let's go through a quick example. Let's say we have a $200 average order value. Keep it simple. And we want to acquire a customer at $110. So $110 customer acquisition cost. 200 divided by 110 times 100 equals $181 of daily budget. Now we just round to the nearest fifth. Getting back to the scaling campaigns, they actually work very similar to creative testing with a couple key differences. We still want to start small. We don't want to load the budget up. We want to scale slowly as we see the performance coming in. There's no need at any point, regardless of how much you're spending on a daily basis, to just needlessly blow your money on testing new tactics and strategies. 
strategies. Now, I'll typically use a combination of CBO and ASC or Advantage Plus shopping campaigns to squeak out a little bit of extra profitable scale on assets that are already doing well and assets that maybe did well in the past, but we had to turn them off because they stopped performing for us. Now, high budget is when things can go wild. Now, we have a lot of money to start testing a ton of different ads and we're already spending a ton of money on ads that have been printing us money for a long period of time. Next step here is to find the little wins. This is also where consulting with an expert paid media buyer like myself or anybody else in the community for that matter is super valuable to a business like this at this scale. Some of the different tactical strategies we can start testing with a high budget include your bid strategy. So rather than just using lowest cost or cost caps, now maybe your ad account is segmented into different campaigns or ad sets that include all of these and testing them to see what works best. We can also experiment with different offers. Maybe we want to offer a bundle for the hero product. Maybe we want to test an entirely new product or a lead magnet or an email capture campaign. Having that flexibility of those winning ads doing their job no matter what allows us to test these things without losing too much money. And lastly, working with Meta to test some beta features. A couple of examples that I've worked with are reminder ads, Advantage Plus catalog ads or ASC in general that was a beta a couple years ago. These features are available to ad accounts that are spending a lot of money. So Meta hand selects them. And on top of that, Meta will also give you ad credits to test their new features. And typically that looks like you spend a hundred grand and then Meta gives you $33,000 in ad credits for spending that hundred grand on a new feature. You can actually bake that extra 33,000 of credit into your return on ad spend calculations. And I know a lot of businesses that are taking advantage of these beta features from Meta and they're able to test new features, see if they work for their business, and they're also able to get a ton of additional ad credit on a quarterly basis. From the campaign perspective, at a high budget, it's actually very similar to a medium budget. You don't have a ton of craziness going on. You still have a very compact and systematized process, and you're typically only creating new campaigns when you have a new offer to test. Now, when you're at a high budget, you also want to diversify the creative vendors that are producing content for your business. Vendor A might be really, really good at producing 3D animations and renderings of your product as video and static ads, but they might suck when you ask them to do a UGC script. Whereas vendor B might have no idea how to produce a 3D animation of your product, but they know how to create profitable performance UGC creatives. And split testing those different styles is key to scaling your ad account because different styles react positively and or negatively depending on the user cohort available on Meta. Now you know the perfect Facebook ads account structure for your business at your scale. But there's something I didn't tell you. Everything I said is completely useless if your business doesn't adapt to the new changes that Facebook is bringing in 2024 and 2025. Click on this video right here to learn about those changes. And until next time, take care. This is really where having an expert media buyer or paid social specialist, this is really where, geez, can I like talk, man? Because it will expand your total market penetration and my phone just fell fantastic.